morning everybody it's half past seven um the last few videos that i have posted i haven't had like a massive topic to talk about i have a massive topic and i wish i didn't I have, this is just so horses are so hard i'm making some very big very hard decisions at the moment and I really hope you'll all be kind when you comment because I'm sure people are going to have some opinions on what I'm going to talk about today. And I kind of, I, I know I need to talk about it, but I kind of wish I didn't have to because it's very much personal and I don't want people giving me their two pennies worth because that's going to be really hard to take because it's not been a decision that's come lightly to me. So, please bear that in mind when you hear what I'm talking about and think about commenting. Thanks. I've got to go get a lorry. And then, yeah, so I'll take you with me. Vehicle number two. So, I am just driving up the drive at the yard. Um, so, the first thing to talk about, the first thing to do is we're taking OB to the vets. Um, he, as we ask a lot of him, uh, he has, he sees the vet to be treated, uh, as a lot of sport horses are. Um, so the vet looks at them and works out whether maybe they could do with a bit of more support in the joints. And then they have a bit of a steroid injection in the joints. Very, very common. I'm sure a lot of you guys will know what I'm talking about. Some of you may not, but look it up. It's pretty normal. Um, and then you give them a period of rest, a couple of days, and then go from there. Um, so we went to do that yesterday and he was lame. And that is when you don't just do that. Um, so we need to find out why he's lame. So we are taking him today up to the vet practice to have some x-rays again. It just seems endless. We fix one thing, we give him rest, we have another. So we had lameness in the right front leg, in the pastern, we solved that. He then did his check ligament. We've solved that, and now there's this. So hopefully bad things come in threes. This is the last one of three, and we are gonna be okay again. So, yeah, <laughs> off we go. So there have been some changes also <clears throat> since we last spoke. Um, Hi little one. So it's it's really hard because I had just got going again and you just it feels all good and he felt great and then he's just a tenth, not right. So we have to go and find out, we have to know what is going on and it might be something very straightforward. He might have just got some slightly arthritic change possibly that just needs the steroid treatment to help kind of get things going again and then help him work better. So the way that the steroid treatment works, and if you're a vet and I've got this wrong, then I really apologize, but this is my understanding of it. When you treat the joint with a steroid and a bit of it, and, and I think it has, is basically anti-inflammatory properties. What it does is it enables the joint to do a job better for itself. <clears throat> so for example, you've got slight arthritis in a joint. If you put the steroid in, what it helps do is it helps the joint then work better, have better mobility, so that then the musculature around the joint becomes stronger in a better way, and then it helps support the movement in a better way. As far as I'm aware, that is my understanding of it. It reduces inflammation, all of those things, and helps the horse perform better and not feel uncomfortable. Um, we ask a lot of them, so we have to look after a lot of them. That's where it goes. So, yeah, that is, that is what we're doing today with Obi. We're taking him up to the vets to have a look at what it is we need to be treating. Potentially it's something more serious. I don't have the answer to that. I will definitely be hoping that it is not something serious and that it is something very straightforward. And then I come to my other thing that I need to talk about today. 
So I've just walked down the field <coughs> to check my retired horses. So I have Nanette, the retired horse. I have Zolo, the yearling, who's owned by my friend. And now I have Kenko, the retired horse. And this is not a situation that has a conversation, a decision, or whatever that has come easily. Um, over the last couple of weeks since I last saw you last saw her, things have been really, really hard. Every time I was riding, I was really getting a feeling more and more like she just hated it. I would every time I would come with her tack, she would be so miserable, ears back, like really depressed. And I made the decision. I, every time I rode, I cried because there was something missing in this situation, something so, she so didn't want to do it. So I made the decision to stop because there is only so long you can go doing the same thing that makes you so unhappy. And both of us, I've never ridden a horse that didn't want to be trained, that hated it, but she did. So we have, turned her out <laughs> and she might go and have a baby if, she, if it's going to work for her because she's such a lovely pony and I do believe that the reasons behind the weird behavior are training related so here we are little horse enjoying some field time so that has been a really hard decision to come to because I really don't, I've never had a horse that I couldn't train and of course I can train her to a point like you've seen on the videos, I can ride her but every time there is this long battle, this long process of the groundwork and the making her okay in her body just to be able to and every time I get on still, every single time I put my foot in that stirrup she goes <gasps> three years of that and I have got to a point where I just I have to kind of admit defeat is that the right way of saying it admit that this is not a riding horse I don't know I don't know is it is it pain maybe is it training maybe is it past bad experience maybe is it me maybe but all of the, it, I can't, I can't work out which. I've tried with pain, I've tried with past experience trying to retrain her, and none of it, still, the cycle is still the same. So for me, I have to think about my happiness as well, because if you went to work every day, and at the point of having to do one task, cried, or felt anxious, or felt broken, you would stop. You wouldn't do it. You would find something, you'd find another solution. So, here I am, finding another solution. And it feels so much better. The relief of not having that on my mind all the time is very big. So, yeah, maybe she will be a lovely mummy because she is a lovely person and she's the best person on the ground. She's so kind and quiet and easy and lovely and yet you bring her tack out and this horrid, anxious, terrified horse comes out. To me, that is telling me something needs to change here and I think it's the riding because work her on the ground, you know, teach her all the groundwork stuff, and she's great. She's really smart. She knows how to kneel, find some video. She knows how to stand on the block. She knows all of these kind of things that are fun and easy, and yet learning to trot around the edge of the school, not, not easy. 
So, this is the topic I don't want too much hate over, please, guys. Understand I'm not taking this comp this decision lightly. I've been in discussion with my vet for three years. My friends, my coaches, and everybody. There has got to be some reward, right? There's got to be some outcome. And still, I do all of this training. I try so hard, and I take it to a show, and I get the same reaction. So, for me, I can't. I can't keep doing it. So yeah, uh, now I need to turn some horses out because then we need to get going and get to the vets. So horses in the field first. This is Nicole, she is here on work experience. Um, she is helping me out today, so you're gonna see her on the video. She's just here on work experience. She's 15 and she is gonna start our GCSEs next year and she doesn't know if she wants to be a horse person or a vet. I've said vet because horse people are not very well paid she's not decided yet so maybe we'll do a poll on Instagram or something who knows so um, Mo and Dee Dee are going out into a smaller field today um, because go look next to us little ones oh. they have a friend <laughs> so a friend of mine um, Mare had a lovely foal and she only lives around the corner and the mare and foal were down in Wiltshire, so she wanted to have them nearby so that she could see them grow and be part of be part of what they do. So um, we're hoping that the mares and foals can go out in the big field together in the next few days, but we're going to put them out in the paddocks next to each other so they can get used to each other. So yeah, that means I might have to help Dee Dee get through a field. This might not go so well, but we'll try. Should we try? I know, we used to go that way, didn't we? I know, I know, I know, it's confusing guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get you ready to go, mate. Not that I really want to go, but I kind of have to. So that is a winner. Um, so we have two little blue feet. So we x-rayed the left leg and there was no changes. Great news. So it means that possibly there's just some inflammation around the coffin joint, which is where there's a little bit of like fluid build up. 
So he's had the coffin joints injected in both feet to make sure that we're not then transferring because what Torsten thinks has happened is when initially he was laying with the right front, that has then impacted the left, which then impacted the check ligament, which has now impacted lower down. Because sometimes when they have a period of rest, it like flares other things up. So we've treated both coffin joints. He's got to have a couple of days resting and then a day, a few days walking and then we can pick up trotting again. And then we hopefully, we're okay. And he's sound and we've caught it and we can help take the inflammation out and then rehabilitate it as we have been doing with gentle work. And then hopefully we're back to where we were. So not awful, thank the Lord. And now we've got to go home and do all the other jobs. Also, me and the vet had a good conversation about um, Mo and how I really wanted to be able to put her back in fall this year because I feel like it's a real shame. She's not the youngest, she's 15. I would like, you know, to be keeping going and hoping that I can actually have a fall of my own from her. Um, and I spoke to him about it yesterday when he came to see Obi and I said, why aren't we breeding from her this year? Is it because I'm not tough enough? And he said, a bit. And I was like, well then I'm tough enough. And I have made the decision that I'm gonna take her to Newmarket. So I have the best of the best and I have some investigation done so they can take a biopsy of their uterus, which makes me want to cross my legs when I think of it. But they have a biopsy of her uterus and then they'll look at her cervix as well and make sure that everything going on on the inside is as it should be. And then maybe if everything is okay, then we look to put her in foal, which is exciting and more optimistic than just waiting and not knowing what's going on. I am a scientist, my parents are scientists, so I've always wanted, I always try and do everything as scientifically as I can. So this this feels more scientific to me than just hanging about and waiting to Mez and Paul's had their lunch. I'm gonna go do some teaching. Just got one lesson to teach. And then need to bring the yelling in and feed him and all sorts of stuff. I'm now officially starving and I don't have any food. Nicole is laughing at me because I'm talking to myself. I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to you guys. Nicole, I need to go and get some food. It's gonna have to happen. I am starving. Yes, reverse. That was weird. The lorry went forward, not backwards. Um, so I'm gonna take quite a few things while I go to the shop. So first thing is Kenko. I am going to put her in foal. Um, I've had been talking to the vet a lot about whether he, I mean, whether we, I mean, you can't really ever tell, but whether we think that what her behaviour is through her nature or is it through past experience. And we don't, we can't really predict that. But I do know that she's had a bit of a strange time and with me as well she hasn't had the best time at the beginning you know she did eject me a few times etc so potentially she's not feeling so good about being ridden because of that not because she was bred like it um she's a lovely type she's got great confirmation she's uh she moves very well She's a lovely nature from the ground. So hopefully she will make a really lovely mum. Uh, I'm gonna put her to a stallion um, at the Brendan Scud. He's by the stallion himself. He's by a stallion called For Pleasure, which is a very famous stallion. For me, the most important thing is the nature of the stallion. Um, obviously I know Kenko is quite highly strong. So I want something that is unhighly strong um, and apparently this stallion that I choose to have chosen to use is so laid back that you can't ride him and take semen from him in the same day because he, he's too lazy 
So that sounds ideal. So he is going to be my choice. He's also very small. He's 16 hands, which is perfect. I don't want something too big. Um, so yeah, so Kenko will go there for a while uh, until she's in bulk, basically. And obviously if there's any kind of problems, then they'll let me know, but hopefully there won't be. And we'll get a nice little horse, what I always wanted, um, with some really proper talent in it. Um, and yeah, so that's quite exciting. I have to see it as exciting because it is quite sad that I am not going to be training her and I've not I've not got to do the things I wanted to do and I achieved a fair amount but always with so much hate trauma from me and her you know it's always been very very difficult for both of us so you know I just I have to draw a line under it at some point and this is me drawing that line so buy a really nice cheese roll it's like a tiger roll with cheese and salad in it because not else you can much you can get from a little supermarket like that but um didn't have any and i've had to buy rolls salad cheese ended up spending 20 pounds because i was also very hungry and bought lots of other stuff that i don't need i don't even know if i've got a knife at the yard this is not going to go well oh also on another very exciting note, I am going to now, as I'm not riding Kenko, I will now be looking for A, a young horse that I'm going to buy and produce myself, a three-year-old to back and produce, like an untouched one, and then B, I have now got space to take on the ride for somebody else. So if you maybe are watching this video and you have got a horse that you can't afford to send for schooling livery, for example, like full schooling livery, but you have a horse that has a lot of potential, maybe a dressage horse, maybe a show jumper, but you don't have the time or you don't have the expertise or you don't want to do it yourself, uh, then maybe I can help. I am happy to offer a very discounted rate of livery in return for the opportunity to ride um, a talented horse. So if you think you can help, or that, is, that, that sounds like it fits the bill, then please do send me a message. Um, you can get me on my Instagram, which is Miri Hackett, or on my Facebook page, which is Hackett Equine. Um, equally, you can send me an email, and the e my email address is in the uh, bio of this video, uh, the description in this video. Um, so yeah, some exciting stuff is going to be happening. I'm going to finish this video here and I'm going to uh, go and ride a couple of horses and then all sorts of stuff this afternoon but I'm sure there has been enough of me talking in one video for one day. Uh, I hope you like the video, I hope you can understand where I'm coming from with some of my decisions and you can support me in them and not... Uh, Give me any hate i don't know if you can tell i'm quite keen on that not happening uh and i will see you next time thanks again so much for watching bye for now